milligrams per deciliter. That is the red flag. It's telling you they're diabetic, they're high blood sugar. Number two, they're an ABG. ABG, you want to know if they have metabolic acidosis. Guess what? Remember from the formula? I always like to cheat. I know. I'm a cheater. But you know what? It works. I don't care. You check your bicarb, it's less than 15. Ridiculous. It's low. It's so low, their pH drops to less than 7.3. It's telling you the message. You got metabolic acidosis. Right? So they have metabolic acidosis, bicarb is low, their pH is drop, blood sugar is high. Guess one more thing. I'm like, yo, doc, I need to know the ketone levels. Number three. I order ketone levels. I check bitter hydroxy, butyrate, elevated acetyl acetate, elevated. Board question. Bam. What agents do we use to measure acetyl acetate? Nitroprusside agents, baby. I got you. There you go. Nitroprusside agents. That's what we use to measure acetyl acetate in the lab. You, you know, you don't have to worry about how to measure it. The point is just know that, know this, know this. They're going to be very high. So you check it in the serum and you check it in the urine. Ketonemia, ketouria. Elevated in the urine, elevated in the blood. Guess what? You nailed it at the coffin. Game over. You just nailed the diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis because diabetic glucose, ketone, elevated amount of ketones, acidosis. Money is gold. You're good. But we're not gonna watch the patient. You're just not. The problem is there's something gotta be causing it. This is for clinical medicine, but on the other hand, what do we want to order? Wait a minute, I gotta find where this is from. If it's an infection. Look into the blood, or the blood cultures. Check in the blood, okay, maybe they go to sepsis. You don't want to miss that, do you? That would be a bad idea. If they have an MI, what do you want to order? EKG, you want to have, you know, troponin and, you know what, CKMB. That would give you the diagnosis. It could be an MI. If it's a GI bleed, you know, work up of GI bleed very long. I'm not even going to talk about it. You probably have to need GI consult eventually. The hemocult, that's the front. Just stick your hand in that butt. Rub it on the hemocult. If it's guac positive, they're probably bleeding. It's probably from the bleeding. It's probably from the form of infection. Sepsis. You get what I'm saying? It's kind of fine. You do a chest x-ray. Why do you want to do a chest x-ray? If they're sepsis, they have ARDS. You have that, like, you know, whiting out of their chest x-ray. You're like, oh, man. Bilateral infiltrate. I'll be giving you the answer. Be careful. Alright, so that's what you want to do. Now that we know the diagnosis, there's still some other extra things that you might see on the lab. And this is actually critical because a lot of patients, a lot of students don't understand this. On the labs, we already order labs, right? I told you check that straight. B U and creatinine, C B C, right? Because if you order the B and B and it's gonna be what? I told you it's gonna be up right, uh, from the beginning of the lecture, so You'll be able to see that. Kind of putting the whole picture together like a puzzle. Right? Labs. I don't know the key thing. You said hyper osmolality. Right? Remember the formula, you know, the old sodium, two times sodium plus blah 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 BUN over 18 and glucose over glucose over 18 BUN over. Yeah. That stuff. Don't worry about it. Here, hyper osmolality. It's common sense. Their blood glucose is, glucose is high, the drug drink, drag water out of their cells, they are dry. Number two, hyponatremia. Let me explain why that happened. Hyponatremia occurs because somehow, somehow, every time your blood glucose goes up, if your blood glucose goes up by 100 milligrams per deciliter, your sodium automatically drops by 1.6 milli equivalent per liter. Should we do a problem? Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, so let's say the blood glucose normally is 100. It's usually 90 to 100. Correct? All of a sudden, the blood glucose goes to 200. When the blood glucose is 200, that means you've gone up by 100 points. Normal sodium, it's normally 135 to 145. In this case, I'm just going to pick 135. 
135, right? If your blood glucose goes about 100, you subtract 1.6 from this number, and lo and behold, you should get 134, actually 133.4. That's basically what that means. But the patient it looks like it's hyponatremic, but it's really not. It's not hyponatremic. The sodium is normal. It's because the blood sugar is high. And we talk about when we talk about the treatment. But on the other hand, what we notice significant is a hyperkalemia. How does that happen? Metabolic acidosis, right? This is how I think of it. High acid is really bad. If you pour acid on your skin, it's gonna you're gonna you know literally hurt yourself. It's gonna bleed. It's gonna burn. So I think of a cell, right? In the presence of acids, the acid is going to eat up the cell. All the beautiful little cute little potassium inside the cell, they're going to leak out. They're all going to leak out of the cells. It's kind of this exchange mechanism, right? But that's the best way to remember it. Acid is going to, you know, literally scratch up your skin. It's going to rip everything like, open the door, open the door. Potassium is going to leak out, but it's actually false. It looks they're hyperkalemic, but they're really not. And you'll find out. You gotta be careful when you're treating this patient. And when we move on to treatment, you'll find out why. So how do we treat this patient? I came up with a mnemonic, FIP. If it works for you, perfect. If it doesn't, it's okay. It's not a big deal. So, how do we treat this patient? Treatment. Number one, fluids. You wanna give them IV fluids. Why? They're dry, they're dehydrated, they need water, they peed it all out. Give them IV fluids. Number two, what is missing? Remember, the problem is there's no insulin. So you want to give these guys insulin. The insulin, however, remember, insulin when it binds, it's going to take the potassium with it. So the potassium is going to drop. So you got to be careful. You got to give them potassium. So you give them potassium. So you make sure they don't become hypokalemic because if you're hypokalemic, they're going to present with more weakness. Remember, and one of the symptoms they have already weakness to start out with, you make it more hypokalemic, you become more weak, they become arrhythmic. A lot of bad stuff can happen. So, you give them potassium, you give them insulin, FIP, and the patient should be fine. You probably have to take them to the ICU. You have to you actually have to take them to the ICU because this is a serious medical emergency. Bicarb, it's kind of controversial. Um, it depends. You have to use a clinical judgment to give them bicarb if you want. Because remember, we said the bicarb is going to drop, which it is going to drop, you know. But once you find the cause you treat it, you you know, kind of, you know, reduce the metabolic acidosis that you have, reduce the, you know, the elevated amount of glucose, everything's trying to calm down. And that's it. That's it, guys. You just take care of one single patient. They come in, you knock them out, you figure out what's going on. It's money in the bank. So, summary. We talk about the definition, pathophysiology. What causes it? We say like so. It's in short, it's gonna be a patient that's gonna come in has type one diabetes. They're gonna be hyperventilating, nausea and vomiting. We have abdominal pain in their belly, right? And they're gonna have fruity smell. You do blood sugar. The blood sugar is gonna be very high. You do you check for metabolic acid with an ABG, and also you kind of do X rays and order some extra labs. This extra lab and the elevated amount of ketones will basically tell you they have a DKA. And all of a sudden, you nail it in the back. You treat their potassium, give them insulin, and give them fluids. They feel better. They say, Doc, you're the man. You saved my life. But you tell them, listen, buddy, you know what? If you get sick, you want to come to the hospital as soon as possible. Because you can get cerebral edema, which would be one of the complications of the... Actually, that's a complication of the treatment. But this would be a severe life-threatening emergency. Because if you get really dehydrated, and when they're dry, remember? They're going to come in with tachycardic, hypotensive. That's usually what will happen with the uh, uh, dehydration. That's how you do, you know, like you do... Autostasis, lying down, sitting up, you know, kind of know that stuff. Uh, but you want to save their life. They say, thank you, doc. You're like, it's okay, my pleasure. That's why I went to school. All right, guys, hit me up if you have any other topics you want to talk about. I really, I'm really glad to do this for you guys. Uh, just on, uh, on the end note, uh, I want you guys to visit my website, www.ftpinc.org, and also thinkpositive.com, Inc. Dot com. Um, and uh, you know, I'm still working on this project for this FTP Inc. Would you guys to visit? Invite your friends. Add me on Facebook. You can find this FTP future. It's actually FTP's uh, future teaching physicians. 
and this is the website uh, we got all medical students across the country to come together if you have good ideas just shoot me an email we post your you know we'll post your article on our website if you have a video something similar to this we we'll post it on the website we advertise you we we'll put your name we give you credit and you can always you know give your friends you know links you can put this on your CV it's a great idea all right thank you very much for watching I'll be back again with other topics in clinical medicine I always remember the only book I use for all of these lectures is uh, clinical uh, step up to medicine I wish you guys all the best have a good day bye bye Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, be able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.